everyone. Welcome to worship at New Hope United Methodist Church of Enid, Oklahoma. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us today. Um, I hope that your family, if you're here in Enid um, or in the surrounding area, just basically all of Oklahoma, I hope that your family uh, weathered the ice storm well. Um, and if you are joining us from outside of Oklahoma, I hope that everyone is healthy um, that you know and in your family. We did not weather the ice storm so well. I mean, my wife and I and our puppies and our house, they're fine. But this tree in our backyard didn't make it. It um, took too much ice, got too much accumulated on the leaves and split in two, uprooted itself. And today, we started the work of getting rid of it. Up until the storm, it was perfectly healthy. Nothing too wrong with it. A couple of dead branches here and there, but it wasn't diseased. It wasn't about to fall down. And yet, one freak storm happens, and suddenly a beloved part of our lives, something that provided us shade, cover, beauty, joy, is suddenly gone. But that's life, isn't it? Today on this All Saints Day, we take time to remember those who have gone before us. Let's hear now these words from the Gospel of John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then Jesus told his disciples plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your, for your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who were with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is already a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When was the last time that you stopped to consider the presence of spirits in your midst? You know, contemplation of the spirit world is <laughs> its no longer, what I'll say, uh, a considerable part of our culture. In times gone by, however, culture is not so distant have marked this time of year, uh, about the midpoint between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice, um, around the time of harvest when we celebrate the, the holidays of All Hallows' Eve or Halloween and All Saints' Day, as an occasion to remember the dead. The Celts of Ireland and Scotland celebrated Samhain, 
a time that they believed marked the convergence of our world and the spirit world. Today, you might find uh, the celebration of Dia de los Muertos, another celebration uh, remembering and honoring ancestors. Taking in these practices, once a year, Christians all over the world celebrate All Saints Day. All Saints Day is an opportunity to honor, remember, and give thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith. Today we're beginning a series on gratitude, a new sermon series. And gratitude is a central component of a well-developed faith life. Gratitude grounds us in the present. It helps us remember the past without being defined by it. And it helps us to move into a future in which we celebrate um, and can, can fully live into the abundant life that we have from God. Today, on this celebration of All Saints, gratitude is about far more than the past. From the early days of Christianity, there's been a sense that the, the church consists not only of all believers, but also of all those who have gone before us. As quoted in the book of Hebrews, Christians are supposed to remember that there is a great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us and encourages us. These witnesses are the saints. A saint doesn't have to be a great and famous person uh, with a special connection to God and a, particularly, a particular holiness. When we talk about saints in that way, um, like the canonized saints of the Catholic or Episcopal Church, um, we often forget about the, the ordinary acts of faith, um, a miraculous way of ordinary living that uh, makes all Christians, in some way, saints. A saint is really any person that has completed the life of faith. In this last year, we at New Hope have lost many saints, and we remember them today. Today we are surrounded by them, strengthened by their witness, and one day, we too will be saints comes that day when we finish our labor on earth and finally reach the sweet rest of death. But death is of course never the end in our story. It's never the end of this Christian story. In our gospel reading today, we're reminded of Jesus' ultimate power over death. John writes of Jesus and his disciples receiving word that their friend Lazarus of the village of Bethany was ill, that despite his faith in Christ, his body was failing, and Jesus arrives too late to save him from dying. It's in this moment, surrounded by the family of his deceased friend, that Jesus, Jesus, the image of God, whose every act reveals the mystery of God does something profoundly human, something simple, something that we all do when we lose someone that we love. And yet, for Jesus, the one who has power over death, the one to whom death is merely like sleep, temporary, fleeting, for Jesus, this is remarkable. A few years back, I read a story about a man who lost his father when he was a child. His father had been diagnosed with cancer, and the cancer was honestly very treatable. Yet, this man was a man of devout faith, and the church that he was a part of didn't accept modern medicine. They thought that Seeking medicine, seeking the treatment of a doctor, was a sign of lack of faith. And so, instead of taking the man in for treatment, his family, the church, prayed over him. As time went on, he became sicker and sicker. 
And the pastor of the church said that God wasn't answering their prayers for healing because there was someone, he didn't know who, who was lacking in faith. Well, later that year, after months of pain and anguish, the father passed away. At his funeral, his son cried tears of grief for having, loved, uh, for having lost his kind, loving father. After the funeral was over, and all of the church members had said their condolences and, and left, the pastor took aside this young boy and said, if you truly believed that your father was in heaven with God, then you'd have no need for grief. If you truly believed that your father was alive in Christ, you wouldn't have cried during his funeral. Your tears are a sign of lack of faith. And that's the lack of faith that caused your father to die. Friends, when we lose someone dear to us, it's not a lack of faith to grieve. It's not a lack of faith to shed tears. The most remarkable thing that Jesus does in this story isn't the raising of Lazarus, honestly. It's that even though he knew that Lazarus was about to live again, even though he has power over death and to him death is just like sleep, Jesus still sheds tears. Our grief at the losses of the saints of our lives, our grief is not a sign of lack of faith. Our grief is an act of love. It's an act of love. Don't ever let anyone tell you that sadness means that you lack faith. No. Sadness means that you abound in love. See how he loved him. Those who surrounded Jesus on that day said of the weeping God. See how he loved him. Friends, as we remember the ones who have gone home to God, it's okay, it's good even, to feel sad. But this morning, I want us to also take time for gratitude. Gratitude is <laughs> a remarkable thing. It doesn't always come easy, especially in the midst of, of, in the midst of loss. But gratitude has the power to transform how we relate to the world around us and, and to our story within it. Gratitude's not some magic sprinkle that we can um, put into our lives and, and eliminate pain and sadness. No. Gratitude is something more. It acknowledges pain, grief, loss, but it also celebrates what we have gained. Gratitude for our saints encompasses both the loss of the ones that we love and everything that they gave to us while they yet lived. When we practice gratitude, we move from focusing on the scarcity of loss toward the abundance of gain. So this, this morning, I'm going to invite you here in just a moment into a practice of gratitude for the saints in your lives, the ones who have, who have uh, called to you to come out of the grave, the ones who have called you to come out into the abundant life that God desires for each of you, the ones who have helped you to, to come out into the person that God has created you to be. So who is a saint in your life? I'm going to ask you to think of them. This can be anyone who showed you God's love. A parent, aunt, uncle, a friend, 
a mentor, a sibling? Who is a saint in your life? I invite you to picture them now. You can close your eyes, uh, for those of you who are at home, you can close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And picture them. As best as you can. Go ahead and allow yourself to remember the pain of losing them. Maybe this pain is fresh. Maybe it's faded. Maybe it comes and goes. But in any case, acknowledge that pain as an expression of love. Now, I invite you to move from this feeling of pain toward a warm, fond remembrance. Hold as much as you can of everything that they gave to you, of everything they were for you. Allow that to warm you. Now, silently express your gratitude for them. Maybe you thank them for being a part of your life. Maybe you thank them for the security or the love um, or something else that they offered to you. Now I invite you to remember something that you learned from them. Maybe it's a life lesson. Maybe you learned something about what it means to love or what it means to be resilient. Think of something that you learned from them. Thank them for teaching you that lesson. Now, I invite you to recall a memory of them that you delight in. Some memory or story that you have of this person who is gone now that will bring you joy to remember. Replay it in your mind. Put yourself into it as though you were there. What is it about this memory that brings you joy? Cherish it for a moment. Now, as you open your eyes and come back to the space that you're in, remember that there is so much good in this world. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who have shown us God's love and who we will meet again. This is good news. This last week when we were I Stand Without Internet, uh, my wife and I rewatched all eight of the Harry Potter movies. really get out for much uh, or do much of anything. So we rewatched all eight of the Harry Potter movies. And um, in that watching, there was one line that stood out to me. Sirius Black says to Harry Potter, the ones who love us never really leave us. You can always find them in here. As we gather around the table and partake in Holy Communion today, the saints are with us in here. I'll end today with a poem by Anastasia Grace. 
It is in this moment that I will tell you, fear not. The ones we love, truly love, never really leave us. Because in their life, when we loved, they became a part of us. And though some may argue that we lose that part of us when they depart, I see it that part of them actually stays with us. They exist in the little things. They exist in the eye color of their siblings, in the dent in the car, in the laugh of their children. They persist in the same details of life we never really appreciated before. Look around. Soon you will discover that love is all around you. True love engulfs you. It becomes a part of who you are and never lets you go. And though they may be gone in person, they will never truly leave us in spirit. You are not alone. Never forget that. So love fully and love deeply. May it be so. Amen. Today as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, remember that we don't just come to this table alone. We don't come as individuals. We don't come with just those who are in our, our physical presence. We don't just come as, as a church or as a denomination or as all of the living members of Christianity who partake in this meal. We come with all of those who have ever lived as Christians. We come with all the saints on this All Saints Day. So for those who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to lead it seek to live a life more like Christ. Come to the table. We lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is our God, the Lord of hosts, who breathed into us the breath of life, who created us to love and to be loved. And when we turned away and our love failed, God's love remained steadfast. God spoke to us through the prophets, sent saviors our way to save us from calamity, and in the fullness of time, sent savior and prophet, Jesus, to make with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, Jesus gathered with the first of those who would be called the saints. And he took bread, he blessed it, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper was over, he took the cup. He blessed it and gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup, and on all of us gathered here. Make them into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, so that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. The Holy Spirit makes us one with Christ, one with each other, one with all of those who have lived and died as saints in ministry to the world. By your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor, glory, and power is yours, Almighty God, 
now and forever. Amen. So you partake today. Remember that you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who loves you, is praying for you, and is with us always. You can partake on your own or with those who are gathered in your household. And as you pass the bread and cup, you may say these words or words that remind you of the grace that is in this meal. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Amen.